Who gives this woman, Lindsay, to Michael in marriage? On behalf of Michael and Lindsay and their families, I welcome you to the Cathedral Community of Christ the King Parish for the joyful occasion of their wedding. I also welcome all of those who are joining us online and by live stream, and a very special welcome to Lindsay's brother Michael in Thailand, her grandmother Marianne Rivera in Arizona, and her uncle Mike in Philadelphia who are unable to be here in person this afternoon. This ritual is a celebration of a love that unites them even more fully into the love and the life of God. And as we begin all of our celebrations in God's presence and name, we begin this one in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Lord Jesus, you are come into the world that we may know love. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the bounty of the Father that we may share love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the Holy Spirit that we may be love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who in creating the human race will that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in the bond of inseparable love that these your servants who are united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us sit as we hear the word of God proclaimed for this joyous day. The 
response is, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Lord. Blessed, blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remained in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. I read a story about the most searched question on the internet. And it wasn't a very great uh, surprise to me that love, that one word, was one of the most perennial favorites. It is, after all, our language of poets. And the song in every heart 
that never ceases to lose its harmony. It is a gift of first life and the promise of perfect and infinite joy. It proclaims the quest of life's meaning and is the eternal question of the human experience. This afternoon, before God and his church and in our presence, the answer to that question of love will be revealed in the vows that we witness, in the sacrament we celebrate, and in the declaration and demonstration of faith by Michael and Lindsay. And that answer, simply, completely, eloquently, and eternally, is God. Michael and Lindsay stand before God and us this afternoon to proclaim with one heart their covenant to commit their lives to each other. They do so knowing that their life together can only be complete if it is also united with God. That union is clearly expressed in the reading selected by Michael and Lindsay for this celebration of their vows. First, in recognizing that it is God alone who has created all life, diverse and unique, with synergy designed to draw all creation back to its source. This partnership is echoed throughout the book of Genesis, especially in the passage in our first reading. I think it not incidental that that partnership between man and woman is predominant, exclusive, and equal. United and separate, the two shall become as one. And of course, way back at the time of Genesis, there wasn't much of a choice in spouse selection. In fact, it can be said that this was the story of the first of the most obvious arranged marriage. Today though, in the sometimes mad rush of social contact in a world teeming with possibilities both meager and strong, finding a soulmate destined to become both lifelong lover and friend is not as guaranteed and still requires the guidance and the blessing of God. And I'm pretty sure that in the long history of church sanctioned unions, dating apps wouldn't have been on the imagined list of places to meet on the way to marriage. But they were imagined by God. And Michael and Lindsay's story of meeting and discovering in each other the qualities and the gifts that have brought them to care to the altar today, that is a sign of God's continuous guidance and grace. Even from their first contact, they both knew that there was something about the other worth holding on to. And the more they discovered in each other, the more firm and permanent that that hold began. There are, of course, the core values that both of them share. Their bond of faith, the outreach of self for the good of others. Lindsay's kindness of heart and the depth of care for others. And it makes her career choice of medicine almost obvious. And Mike's gift of listening with his heart and his ability to turn a moment of stress into a season for joy. Those are comfort that gives strength in a marriage in the most difficult of times. And there will be difficult times. Not that the past five and a half years have been particularly easy. The length of a relationship leading to marriage for any young couple requires commitment and patience, humility and a growing love. But for a couple trying to adjust to the stress and the uncertainties of med school, and at the same time building an IT career, mutual support and a fair amount of understanding is not only a baseline requirement, but also a vibrant witness to what Jesus meant when he called those who followed him the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt isn't so exciting except when used as a preservative and as a spice to season food. Even then, it is the food itself that is of greatest value. Salt may have preserved and given the food flavor, but it is the behind the scenes support and the motivator, the hidden season that salt is. 
and for the, for the enhanced achievement of taste. That's for the same reason that each of you in your marriage must preserve and enhance yourselves and the gifts that you have. Michael has demonstrated both all of that throughout his th the last three years of Lindsay's demanding residency and fellowship. He has been the salt of the earth behind the scenes working, accompanying her in her move to Memphis, supporting her as she advanced in knowledge and training and skill, providing humor and calm, comfort and care of home and heart when Lindsay needed it the most. He was, in the words of Jesus, the salt of the earth because he is in the, it is in those little things that we do for each other, in the everyday moments of our lives, that the greatest and most powerful examples of love are set. And although school and world, world health circumstances might require a curtain, certain focus for Lindsay, her love for Michael, her commitment, and her own self-giving are no less reciprocal and life-giving to their relationship. A relationship which in a few moments will be sanctified by marriage. In that union of their love, they will be called to shine even more brightly as an example of God's union with them. A love that will be able to give others, to show others, to be for others, who they are and how they live. In our second reading from John, we're reminded that God is the source of all love and that Jesus is the living presence and the model of that love. Michael and Lindsay, loving and living as he did, supporting and being the support for each other will ensure that you will be filled with his joy even when happiness escapes you. It will keep you sane and balanced and together. You will always know that you are loved. Jesus wants his joy to be with us so that our joy will be complete. That is especially true in marriage, where your love for each other is first the mirror of the love that God has for you. Together, you are to be an example for your children, a witness to your community, and a sign of God's grace in the world. But you can't do that alone. You need a community to support you, a church to guide you, and each other to literally be your other self. You won't become one if you lose sight of the reality that you really are two. Both of you, unique and gifted, are necessary for the sustenance and the growth and the life of your marriage. If you put and use all these gifts together, if self-sacrifice and honesty becomes the mantra of your heart. Not only will you become truly the person God created you to be, you will also be a witness to a love and a strength much larger than yourselves. The more you love, the more that love will grow within you. May this day enshrine the sacrament of that love and increase your joy. May you embrace every day hereafter with each other and may God, who has brought you here today together, bring you also to himself, so that the two shall become three, and the three will be one. And so now, Michael and Lindsay, I invite you to come forward to proclaim your love and to begin your lives in marriage together and in God. Michael and Lindsay, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community. 
In this way, you will be strengthened to keep mutual and laughed in fidelity with each other and to carry out other duties of marriage. And so in the presence of this church, I ask you to state your intentions. Michael and Lindsay, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Yes. Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the laws of Christ and his church? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, you have joined your hands and I ask you now to declare your consent before God and his church. I, Michael, take you, Lindsay. I, Michael, take you, Lindsay. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Lindsay, take you, Michael. I, Lindsay, take you, Michael. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord, in his goodness, strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. But God has joined, let no one divide. Lord, bless and consecrate Mike and Lindsay and their love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other and always remind them of their love. Lindsay, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Lindsay, take this ring as a love of as a sign of As my love, sign and fidelity. love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son. In the name of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Michael, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Michael, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son. In the name of the Father and of the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> now that we have heard God's word in the Bible and have experienced the Lord's presence in the exchange of vows, let us now present our prayerful petitions for Michael and Lindsay, for their family and their friends, for our church, our world, and for those in greatest need. And I ask for this, our petitions to please stand.
Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Michael and Lindsay, and of all present for this wedding, may they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. Let us pray, pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all those prayers that we hold in silence of our hearts, let, let us, us pray, pray to the Lord. O oh, ever living and caring God, Jesus taught us to ask, to seek, and to knock. We have just done so. Confident that you will now look upon our many needs, consider our trusting faith, and in your great love, grant these requests which we present to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated, please. be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring you in gladness. And in your fatherly love, watch over those you have joined in a sacramental covenant through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of your divine nature, and join theirs, and joint heirs with him in heavenly glory. In union with the husband and wife, you give sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, and so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim
zit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate those mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by your body, by the body and blood of your son, May, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, the order of bishop, clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of the marriage of Michael and Lindsay, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant that they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather yourself to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom 
where they, there where they hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. As we share in the celebration of this newly married couple, let us call upon God, God's nuptial blessing for them as we enter into communion with them, with our church and with our God. And let us now humbly invoke our, by our prayers God's blessings upon Michael and Lindsay and that in his kindness he will favor them with his help, especially on those who he has joined in marriage today. Holy Father, maker of the world who created man and woman in your own image and who and who willed that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you that these, your servants, who are joined together today in the sacrament of matrimony, and may your abundant blessing, Lord, come upon this bride, Lindsay, and upon Michael, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts ablaze from on high, so that living out together the gift of their matrimony, that they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with circle of family and friends that surround them, may they come into the kingdom of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer now a safe sign of peace.
My sisters and my brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We are now going to distribute the Eucharist, the, the rite of Holy Communion, and I invite all of those, all of you to come up for those receiving communion, and if you're non-Catholic or not receiving communion, the sign you want a blessing is your hands across your chest. Thank you. 
Grant, we pray, almighty God, that the power of the sacrament that we have received may find in these your servants that they may affect the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite the wedding party and the bride and groom to prepare themselves for their final vows, uh, for the final blessing. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you with children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who have gathered here today for the celebration of joy in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in peace and it is now my great and deep pleasure to introduce you to the fir for the first time, Michael and Lizzie McHale, husband and wife. <laughs>